Good morning uh, friends, uh, today we are going to discuss about applications of bulk deformation process. This is Shomna Chattopadhyay from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Indian School of Mines, Dhanbad. Application of uh, bulk deformation is quite widespread. As from the title slide, uh, one can find it out that the main inputs are the bloom, the slab, the billet and those are the, the fade into those uh, metal forming process and on the basis of that the different components, products, channels and structural parts, elements are manufactured in extensive numbers for the different kind of applications. So, these uh, processes are the first one is rolling where two cylindrical rolls uh, rotate in opposite direction and in the bin, in the process they pull it out because of the friction between the rolling surfaces and the workpiece and according to that the deformation takes place that is known as rolling straight uh, flat rolling or calendaring type of things is possible then other deformation process where shape rolling and all those things will be also possible with different kind of roll uh, structures are used and they have their own uh, different shapes so conjugate uh, shapes are produced through rolling activity these are called shape rolling activity and then threads and all those things are possible. The third one is the forging where with some gradual pressure or impact pressure the products are developed that is called forging. The other deformation process related to forging because uh, different forging processes are there where flashless forging, open die forging, closed die forging. So many many varieties can be produced intricate shape in one go mm, that is also related to forging. The fifth one is extrusion where against the die the workpiece material are pushed and from the die itself depending on the shape of the die the things are produced in large and long quantities. It can be uh, solid, it can be uh, hollow structures and these hollow structures are produced by the use of a typical tool that is called mandrel. Circumferentially follow against the mandrel surfaces uh, through the die and that way the PO hollow structures like the tubes and the pipes can be produced large quantities long length and the sixth one is wear or bar drawing so instead of uh, pushing like extrusion it is pulling against uh, the die and how the wears and bars are produced as pulling is done it is called wear or bar drawing the limitations is that from infinite uh, reduction is not possible step by step we have to reduce and that is uh, uh, extensively mentioned in the uh, handbook uh, mechanical production engineering handbook where the different materials and what kind of the steps are possible without any fracture we can produce all those wear and bar and this is called the wire drying activity against the die. Next is the meaning of the bulk deformation process. So, metal forming operation which cause significant bulk means uh, where the surface is area is small in comparison to the volume. So, that is why it is called bulk those materials are called bulky. So, bulk deformation process is voluminous deformation process significant shape changes and metal parts whose initial form is bulk and rather than the sheet. Sheet where surface area is more volume is less bulk is where surface area is less and volume is more. So, that is the difference between bulk and sheet and those bulk materials are deformed significant deformed and shape changes and dimensional changes happen. And that is why it is called bulk deformation process. This process works by stressing material sufficiently to cause plastic flow into the desired shape. All those deformations are permanent. So, it is done in the plastic zone beyond the ill point. So, that permanently deformed, permanently dimension changes uh, sufficiently cause the plastic flow and some kind of flow just like a little bit of tight fluid it will flow. So, some flow stress and other things are involved. So, it is flown uh, flow 
it will flow in that very way to give the appropriate shape. So plastic flow to form the desired shape and performed as cold, warm and hot three classifications but major classification is hot and cold and hot is beyond recrystallization temperature and cold is and near about root temperature and in between some narrow zone this is called warm working operations. This is why it is hot because strike the iron while it is hot. If it is hot then the less strength is required, less stress is required in order to deform all those things. So lowering of the ill strength takes place at elevated temperature. So that is why it is done hot. Then why not everything is hot? The reason is that cold working also in some cases have better surface finish, dimensional accuracy and strain hardening. And why everything is not cold working? The reason is that uh, huge amount of forces will be required. The machines will be just like dinosaur in order to do that and there is a possibility of uh, cracking or fracture and that is not an intended one. So judiciously depending on the recrystallization temperature and capability and dimensional accuracy surface finish required ductility of those materials. So people decide whether it has to be cold working or a hot working process and handbook has uh, these uh, handbooks will provide lot of information and lot of guidelines to go for whether to go for hot or cold working. So in hot working significant shape changes can be accomplished uh, quite comparatively easily in comparison to the cold working because the yield strength is lowered because of the elevation of the temperature. That is the beauty of hot working but definitely hot working comes with some kind of problems like dimensional uncertainties and the scale formations and those things are there and it is not near net ship manufacturing because in many cases significant amount of post processing are required. But in cold working we can achieve uh, um, near net ship manufacturing or net ship manufacturing but the problem is that cold working applicability is limited not possible for every material and every shape to go for the cold working process. Cold working strain can be increased during the shape change. The reason is that because of a very typical phenomena that is called strain hardening. Strain hardening occurs a because of the cold working process. At elevated temperature, strain hardening does not occur. So in hot working, possibility of strain hardening is not there, but cold it is there. So sometimes we need the surfaces hardened so that the wear resistant unintended removal of material and those things are uh, less. And many of the cases, the components we require surface to be hardened, case to be hardened so that their longevity is big, great and they are uh, uh, where uh, this become surface become wear resistant and there uh, good applicability of cold working is possible even if even if only cold working is feasible. And uh, the third third importance of bulk deformation that little or no waste is generated. Immediately the deformation process will give the shape change not like machining so that you can remove all those materials. It is not a material removal process it is a material shaping process. And as there is no material is removed, so there is no question of uh, wastage. So some operations are really near net shape or net shape manufacturing, specifically cold working. Hot working, the problem is that little bit of scale formation, dimensional uncertainties are there. Sometimes one has to kill these uncertainties and create the finish with some post-processing activities. The parts will require little or no subsequent machining that is the feature of a net shape or a near net shape manufacturing. People always want net shape manufacturing. The reason is that in one go the job is over. Extra process means extra effort, extra time, extra cost and extra hassles. So net shape manufacturing is hassle free manufacturing. But sometimes it is not feasible, technologically feasible at this present state of affair. So four basic deformation process, rolling, forging, extrusion and wear drawing. Rolling, I have already told that slab or plate squeezed between those pressures, compressive pressures, opposing rolls, dimensional changes, reduction in diameter and if some shape, shapes are there then shape rolling activity. Forging, work is again squeezed but not by rollers but by upper and lower die. Sometimes most of the cases upper die moves and lower die is stationary and it can create some intricate shapes because of their 
uh, structures internally and according to that with the pressing whether the gradual one or uh, associated with the impact uh, pressure uh, immediately in one go one impact just like drop hammers the shape will be changed and that is known as forging extrusion already told that work is squeezed workpiece is squeezed in a die opening and it will take whenever outlet of the die according to that the things will be there one can go for solid extrusion one can go for hollow extrusion and all the external shape depends on the internal shape of the die conjugate surface is produced and wear and bar drawing diameter of the wire, uh, wire or bar is reduced by pulling it through a die opening instead of pushing we have to do pulling activity against the die and it is a very popular process for producing wares but definitely the step wise one has to do immediate very big diameter to very small wear cannot be produced in one go step wise and what is that it is written in the handbook guideline for different kind of materials the wares are a very popular process of producing wear in this very way so one can see all those things so first one is the bloom from the bloom itself it is a square cross section and structural shapes i sections very good for those designs uh, advantages and then rails used for all tracks in the conventional railway track bullet train tracks all sorts of things rails are there rails are basically a roll product coming from the bloom bloom the cross cross section is there near about 150 to 150 or other varieties are there and very very long they are the product from the continuous casting line so they are fed into those structural shape rolling rolls and according to that we can have very very fast production of those structural shapes channels angles rails the next one is the slab slab is also reduced maybe by rolling activity and the plates and the sheets and the coils depending upon their thickness there are standardized specification this is called sheet this is called plates and according to that we can produce all those components required uh, for different industrial application and the third one is billet and these billets may be used in case of the drawing activity bars and rods and other things were drawn so so main four components uh, three to four bloom slab billets and bars mainly bloom slabs billets are the raw material for the metal forming to generate all sorts of varieties of the of the metal form product so blooms are used in a rolling material a rolling material in the manufacturing process of the rails seamless pipes seamless pipes why because as there is no seam there is no weaknesses in case of the pipes all those things have a welded section that is the weaknesses one because any type of cases it can leakage will be there if seamless pipe perfect there is no weakness uniform there is no joining associated with that very good for uh, leak proof uh, conveyance of the fluids then billet is also a cast, uh, casting product comes out from the continuous casting line and generally they are coming from the CCM continuous casting machines or continuous casting and these billets are coming from those things and billet has a square cross section but cross section area of the billet should be the same and it has some some uh, standard dimension like 36 square inch of the area of the square section and they are used in the manufacturing process of the steel uh, rebars and all sorts of varieties so uh, if one compares ingot uh, the coming from the casting line continuous casting line or cast uh, steel plant then bloom billet slab based on their weight and dimensions uh, ingot is the biggest weight then bloom then then billet uh, and then slab these are all primary output uh, primary input material for these metal forming uh, plant so what is slab slab is a rectangular cross section where uh, length and width are there length is very big width are there but uh, this cross section is rectangle where length is more than that of the that the thickness slab has a thickness lesser than the bloom that is the definition and uh, strictly defined with some dimension range 
So in goats, they are very large casting product, very big, bulky product, greater in size, shape than the blooms. So ingot is the biggest raw material of the metal forming process. Then blooms, billets and slabs. And the ingot generally has rectangular cross sections, but it is not necessarily that it should be uniform. So they are just the blunt product coming out of the steel plants. Blooms has rectangular cross sections and cross sections have some, some kind of uh, dimension set in order to represent them. So this is rolling activity as we have discussed that two cylindrical rolls are there and they are squeezed to give, uh, squeezing the raw material to come out of uh, those rolls some dimension and shape changes as our mothers and sisters are producing those breads but it is one roller another one is a flat one but here because of the metal lot of forces and lot of squeezing activity is required and that is why a uh, lot of forces are there and two rollers are required and they are squeezed and the fractional force between the rolling surfaces and the workpiece is responsible for pulling. So we do not have to use some kind of pulling like say wire drawing. So the frictional surfaces provide the pulling activity. It is in work thickness is reduced by compressive mainly compressive force by two opposite rolls direction of flow workflow and that way the roll rotation is also dictated and the rolling process specifically flat rolling calendaring on all those things will be produced. By geometry the one is flat rolling where the slabs or plates will be produced just to reduce the thickness and shape rolling a square cross section formed into a shape such as I beam. So some kind of uh, formal structure, typical structures of those rolls which are responsible for producing and not a very uniform one that kind of shape with the rotation then people will find it out that I beam is produced, angles, channels, all sorts of things can be produced and this is called shape rolling activity. And the temperature uh, we have already discussed hot rolling and cold rolling most common due to the large amount of deformation required. and if it is uh, below the yield point, below the uh, uh, recrystallization temperature, a lot of force is required because yield strength is high. Yield strength is reduced whenever with the increase of the increment of the temperature. So that is why that is the biggest advantage of whole trolling so that it is feasible, possible and with a finite machine can produce with a handy structure. Of all those things. If it is of a cold rolling, the machine has to be big and there is a possibility of this crack and fracture. So cold rolling produces finish real and plate stock, cold rolling and other things are a very near net shape manufacturing type of pro process and uh, produces finished one, dimensional uncertainties are very less and Mm, the surface finish is also great because scale formation will not be there just like the case of hot rolling activities because scale formations are there because of the oxides. So a rolling mill for hot flat rolling sheets is coming seen as a growing strip extending diagonally from the lower left corner. So very big mill and from there itself it is coming out of it. And uh, in near about Calcutta, one place is called say Balur, where the Indian company Indal was having one of the largest rolling mill in order to produce those aluminium sheets, one of the largest in Asia. And then the company was taken over by Aditya Billa Group is Jindal. So Indal at Balur, they are also having a very big factory associated with that. The next one. So this is the speed opposite direction to rolling mills and uh, uh, with the feeding speed transverse speed is also there in order to feed that and dimension is reduced. And there is a three, three rolling high rolling mill so that ro it is in two iteration the sizes are reduced. Three rolling mill configuration, there are different configuration depending upon the size reduction to be ensured uh, with those uh, plates and that way it is uh, uh, implemented and this is a different combinations and then another combination is also there that is four high rolling mill where uh, big two cylinders and then the next smaller cylinders are responsible 
in order to have a very good non jerky stepless motions and good quality finish will be there without much jerk and that way one can ensure the quality of all those things but still hot rolling is a slightly dimensionally uncertain process this is another one the cluster one not just these uh, sequentially the clusters so that their pressure and other things are very very um, uniform and uh, no jerking activity that jerking and all those things will jeopardize the surfaces and that way it is implemented quality products will come out of it different configurations and this is called tandem one after another and this is also done as a straightener very big cylindrical straightener in case of wear drawing also we have to use some straightener out after the drawing operation in order to kill the undulations and whenever this tandem type of things so wavy there is always a possibility of hot rolling that some wavy character will come out after this pressing and the spring back effect but here it is pressed together tandemly concurrently and the advantage is that good quality and flatness and other things will be obtained the next one next one is also very important that it is thread rolling activity two rolls are having some kind of uh, threads in this inside part and they are rubbing together and that way the threads are produced so start starting blank and then it is the finished blank with those thread formation this is the most productive process of generation of threads no waste together and very very fast so all those uh, uh, high tensile uh, nuts and bolts they are also produced by those uh, hot rolling activity 98 to 99 maybe more than that percentage of the threads are produced by rolling activity is the most productive process not by thread cutting activity but the problem is that one requires a dedicated die depending on the configuration and pitch pitch is the most important criteria to represent a thread so every different thread you have one has to have some different dedicated die and this die to manufacture those die is a better material and it is not very easy to generate all those groups so it is a long a lead time process so one has to be planned accordingly immediately it cannot be done so you need but once it is there then productivity is not a very big issue so all those mass production activity all those things thread rolling is a very popular one so ring rolling what is deformation process in which a thick walled ring of small diameter rolled into a thill thin uh, walled ring larger thick wall is ring compressed to produce those things elongation and hot working large inside cold working process for smaller rings larger for hot working ball and roller bearings those, those inner rays outer rays and all those things can be produced quality finish is required because all those rolling element will be in inside these inner and outer type of races so all those rings can be produced advantages material savings no wastage of material good grain orientation strengthening through cold working if the cold working is there strain handling and the product surface area is very strong so one can find it out the typical way of all those things so all those rings are elongated and giving proper shape with some kind of rollers outside cylinders inside cylinders aging roll so that the age preparation and all those things will be very good so all sorts of things are associated with the left one is the initial process and left uh, right one is the final process and that way by pressing together one can ensure the diameter and good quality of all those rings and this activity is called ring rolling activity some shape rolling activity so thank you we have discussed a very rudimentary part of those uh, applications of the bulk material process including rolling mainly focused on rolling and how those things are done shape rolling difference between shape rolling and typical flat rolling activity now the configurations are there different roll configuration tandem rolling cluster rolling and all sorts of things we have seen that and depending upon the specification geometries and the um, material properties of all those aluminum has one kind of configuration then steel has another kind and mostly it is a hot uh, rolling activity because a lot of forces are required if it is a cold rolling and there is a chances of rupture and fracture will be there 
and because uh, temperature reduces the yield strength so that everything the plastic deformation state reach quite early an elongated place between the yield point and the fracture so that ground of play is big and these activities are carried out by hot rolling activity but some percentage are definitely there in cold rolling because of their initial advantages of strain hardening and the surface finish and dimensional stability and then lastly we have seen some of the thread rolling activities that shape another part and then um, ring rolling activity from there itself so different shapes and other things can be produced quite easily and it's a very very popular process all over the world to produce those kind of product through metal forming business thank you